uh, out of all the people that you raced against, or maybe maybe prior to you racing, uh-huh. who was your biggest hero? Well, I, ha- I had one in Oklahoma City. It was, his name was Everett Humphrey, and he ran number 12. Uh-huh. And that's why I always ran number 12. But, you know, growing up selling programs, I'd wait for those guys to come in the pit gate, at, you know, in the middle of the afternoon on Friday, and I'd have the programs there. He'd always come and buy a program from me and, and talk to me, and we, we were really close. And, and uh, you know, so I'd say it had been Everett Humphrey. But, you know, going down the list, I mean, Everett Humphrey, uh, Harold Leap, Emmett Hahn, you know, those guys were just bigger than life, all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and being able to be around them through, throughout my career was really excellent. And then when I started racing, most of them had, had retired, but but I was able to get input, input from those guys and uh, because they had been watching my career along the way. You know, so it was really neat right. to have that, you know, that uh, influence. Who is uh, Shane in your racing career? Who was the guy that you wanted to outrun the most? If, if there was one person that you wanted to really beat more than anybody out there, who would it be? No question. I've been Doug Wolfgang. Yeah. You yeah. know, Doug was, of course, he was the the driver of the Trosso cars before I came along. So I followed him into the, into the seat. And then I was constantly trying to be as good as, or be able to be competitive with, and, you know, and, and of course, you know, Trossel would say, well, Doug did this. And I'm thinking, well, I'm not Doug, <laughs> you know, but I'm, I'm going to do my best to beat him. And, and we yeah. did some. I wouldn't say we beat him all the time. Right. But I def- definitely beat him some. And, and uh, you know, that was a major accomplishment for me. And, and uh, you know, it kind of gave me a little bit of, of uh, something to talk about. Yeah. Did you, did you have a preference on driving a wing car or a non-wing car? What was your preference? Well, you know, I mean, one my I won my first championship with Trossel non wing. Yeah, know, that's how we that's how we did it. We didn't we didn't really we weren't expert wing racers at all. We went to Eldora the first time with that Trossel car, and uh, I was showing Bob pictures of it. I said, Bob, that thing is dragging the ground. You know, the wing was just planting it so heavy. Yeah, and uh, he said, Well, that's the way we ran it. We run it that way all the time. <laughs> so uh, you know, we had to kind of get better at the wing stuff. We had to work at that, but I think we had a, a non-wing program pretty well dialed in. I, I actually liked it better without, but then as racing went on and technology kept up and and uh, I got to be, be uh, feel better about running wings, you know, more so. You know, I think there's a little bit of a chance when you do crash, you, you land on that thing maybe the first time and it helps you out because, you know, that's kind of documented, but... Um, yeah, right. Right, but well, I do like I do like non wing stuff still. I like to watch them. I like to to be around them. What do you think about when Knoxville went from um, non wing to wing? Were, were you in favor of that at the time? Well, it was in, it was in eighty at the end of eighty one. They went right. to they went to all wings in ninety two in eighty two, and I wasn't running there all the time. But um, you know, I was running World Outlaw um, season the full time for eighty in eighty two eighty three. And I know that was a big move for them, and I felt like it was on the safety side. I know that's why they did it, because we had a couple of fatalities right, right there. You know who they were. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, that was a rough rough on, on all of us. And um, they felt like they was making a move that would, you know, would benefit and be on the safe side. So yeah, I think it was probably a good idea. Yeah. Man, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. We sure appreciate you taking the time to join us today. Um, we'd love to have you on in the future. I hope that's a, okay. a possibility. We'd love oh, to talk absolutely. to you about racing. So, yeah. um, congratulations on everything in life, man. It, things have been really good for you, haven't they? They have. I've been really lucky. I was, I got through my career without being hurt too bad. And yeah, you know, that's, that's always a plus. Where was your biggest? In- I can remember most everything that happened. <laughs> where was, where was your biggest injury that you ever had? Um, you know, at Belleville, Kansas, I got in a really bad one. I was in Crossell's car and the right front wheel, the hub broke off going wow. into the corner. This is non wing stuff. Holy cow. So stuck in the ground, went straight up and flat right on the right on the cage and folded it down. Luckily for me, I was way down in the car, you know, I'm pretty short. Right. So that helped me. And uh but it turned my helmet around. Everybody thought it broke my neck. I did have some some compression fractures from that and uh I was I missed a week and we came back the next week and won the next two races. You only took a week off. Yeah. Yeah. That that that's old school mentality right there. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, yeah. And that, and that concussion at the Belleville was three days after the other concussion I had at Devil's Ball. I was driving the uh, 4X car for for Speedy Bill. John Singer was there with me. Yeah. And I crashed, and, and he immediately took that car home, and I was out of that car. Yeah. 